Welcome everybody to the July 13th, 2017 Addison Township Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. I'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you. Okay, could I have a roll board of the PBA members, please? Chair Hatfield? Here. Vice Chair Smith? Here. Trevor Hayward? Here. Tony Spina? Here. Eric Sen? Here. Robert DeWitt? Here. Okay, I might make a note on uh, the uh, one case the, uh, tonight. Case 1702, uh, Mr. DeWitt is going to be a voting member <coughs> uh, in place of uh, Mr. Sent. Okay, next on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Do we have any? Uh, okay, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I understand mm -hmm. that there's a, a small issue with one of our applicants, I make a motion we reverse items two and three on the agenda. Okay, well, item two is the, uh, the Verizon case, 1702. Right. You want to move? Two, three, three to two. You want to move the uh, 1703 to the first? Mm -hmm. Okay, to item number two. Okay. Just for reference, he was on last, last, last one. Any comments from the other board members? We have a second for the motion. Yes. I second. Yes. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? The motion is carried. All right. <clears throat> Item three will be heard as in uh, before case number two, item number two, case 1702. All right. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is approval of minutes. I make a motion to approve the uh, agenda as amended. Oh, the, I think we're at the minutes. We did, we did the agenda oh, change. Agenda. We don't need to approve the uh, amended uh, We just voted agenda. on that. Yeah, we did that one. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right. Now we need to... Uh, the minutes? Right. Amend minutes. or okay. approve. I have one small change or um, revisement, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, I have to memorize, I can't find it right here. <laughs> it's going to take you a while to find it in that file. I know. <laughs> this is, uh, so this is regarding the conversation with the applicant, uh, Don Powell in regards to the pitch of the roof. And, uh, oh, that's May. <clears throat> Where he starts speaking, I start speaking, I don't know the page number. Uh, probably page two. Three. Let's see, page three. When we were addressing that case. And uh, page, uh, four page four is also. Page four. Page four. Uh, it, it's not a 512 pitch, but a 512 pitch. 5 slash 12. Should be correct. Should be 5 slash 12, 7 slash 12. <clears throat> Just a minor. Okay. Advisement. And that's all I have. Okay. Any other issues with the minutes? from June. And I would entertain a motion to... Uh, I'd like to motion to accept the minutes for the June 8th meeting. As amended. As amended. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, I'd like a roll call vote, please. Yes. Tony Spina? Yes. Trevor Hayward? Yes. Vice Chair Smith? Yes. Chair Hatfield? Yes. OK, 
Okay. <clears throat> June minutes are approved. Okay. Next item on the amended agenda is case 1703. The applicant is William Thomas, John Inshaw, owner. The address is 555 Manatech, Leonard, Michigan, 48367. Um, parcel is 0527178012. Zoning is residential one. Um, sure. <clears throat> Before we start, oh, I'm I, sorry. Yep. I think you wanted me Very to good. go over a few issues. Please, please. Uh, I wanted to remind the public um, that the Zoning Board of Appeals, as we talked about last week or last month, is the appellate relief body for the township with respect to people who need to deviate. We call it a variance, but it's really a deviation from the zoning ordinance. And as such, the notices have to go out according to law to a certain range of distances from the property that's affected by the request and i know that that issue came up at the last meeting there was some you know how come the whole township or the whole world doesn't get a notice about this but it's in reality because of the state law it's not a township law and then i wanted to remind everybody why um, there is a public hearing and an opening and a closing of the public hearing. Um, under the state law, and I have uh, multiple copies, I thought that some of you expressed great interest in these issues at the last meeting, so I would call upon our newspaper representative to hand these out. I didn't ask her to do that, but she's going to do it, aren't you? <laughs> All right, just to, whoever wants them. And I just want to go through and remind everyone that the reason we have to open and close the public hearing is because the relief from any decision of this board is on the record to the circuit court. And the reason that that is important is that the record that might go to the circuit court has to be a defined record. <clears throat> so in other words, um, there has to be a beginning of the public hearing to which this board would open and there has to be an end. And then that's it. And in this township, we accept comments and written materials all the way through and up to including through the public hearing. And then the public hearing is closed. And that means that for the fairness of the board and for the fairness of applicants, we can't keep hearing more information and receiving more information because the box of materials and the box of testimony that gets reviewed is by a circuit court. There's no other body in the township that would hear an appeal from this body. So as you see on the first page that I gave you, the decision of the Zoning Board of Appeals is final. It's a final decision. Only a party aggrieved by the decision can go to the circuit court. And when you go to the circuit court, it's on the record. The court shall review the record and the decision for four criteria. And you see the A, B, C, D, right? So there's four things that a circuit court looks at. But as this board knows, because I give them training, you guys pay attention, right, to the, <laughs> most of the time to my training, um, the record is what gets bundled up and taken to the circuit court if we got to that point. So if, in fact, they don't respect the public hearing opening and closing, this would never end. It would be like, I remember having conversations when my daughter was a teenager she had to have the last word and i wanted to have the last word and we could have talked all night but somebody had to end it has to end the applicant has to have finality of the record so if new information comes in outside of the records it's unfair to the applicant because the applicant hasn't seen that information it's unfair to the board because you're in a quandary now is do we receive it do we consider it how do we handle new information <clears throat> so I don't want it to appear on any of these cases that the township doesn't want to hear from the public. The township doesn't want to receive information from the public. 
In fact, the opposite is true, but it has to be within the boundaries of the law. Tonight, on I think both of these cases, the public hearing is closed, correct? Or the first two cases we'll be hearing in the public hearing. Yeah. Closed, yes. So what that means is that <clears throat> they closed the public hearing last month and they are now going to deliberate tonight and render a decision. There won't be any more testimony this evening. There's no more record enhancement this evening. It's uh, strictly, wait, wait, wait one sec. It's strictly for them to uh, deliberate and come to a decision. So the July 3rd memo from the planning consultant, which was completely erroneous, that would not be part of your record. Well, that, was not be that was not submitted prior to or you know, as part of the public hearing. hearing. I, I haven't even, I've not even read his uh, report, but. Um, and also there's another thing from. Uh, <clears throat> the, the exception, the, I may make a comment, yeah. the exception to uh, uh, the, the public hearing is, is closed. The exception to gathering new evidence is if the board wishes to have more information. The board has queried the planner for more information. The board may query the applicant for more information this evening, but the period for public comment is closed. Right. And that's that's consistent with uh, with the law. I just want to make sure that was clear. Does anybody else need a copy of this? Or did you, I brought a whole bunch. I thought they were going to be. Well, I, I just want to make one comment. I did mention about the, the letter to elementary um, that was denied. And uh, I couldn't find the actual record. Uh, and that the minutes were obviously excluded from the site. Um, but I did find where. The Oxford Leader had an article about that denial, and then I also found that your meeting minutes in 2008 uh, about uh, T-Mobile also being denied a tower for similar actions that we placed into the record. Okay. So All right. I want you to re refer to those two things that are in the record. Mm. Because, it, because it was part of the discussion that we had I think asked, they heard, I think that, they heard we had that. asked that you look into this and, and, I think, and pull this information I think out. they heard that testimony and they, if they looked oh, into it. Yes, yes, we have. Okay. 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 So I just want to make sure we're good on that. Uh, I know I butted in and you were in the middle of calling the first case. Not a problem. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, case 1703 is uh, applicant is William Thomas. Uh, John Insho is the owner. 555 Manatech, Leonard, Michigan, 48367. Uh, zoning is R1, residential one. Applicant seeks a variance from the Township of Addison Code of Ordinances, Appendix A to Addison Township Zoning Ordinance for the placement of an, and expansion of an existing accessory structure in the front yard, Article 4, Section 4. Point two one number three B. An accessory building shall not be located in the front yard. Uh, accessory building located in the side yard shall meet the side yard setback requirements of the district in which the accessory building is located. An accessory building is located in the rear yard shall not be located closer than the five feet to any property line. And any variance for placement of said structure. Uh, Expansion completely beyond the front yard setback. That, that's the other uh, variance he's asking for. So, Mr. Uh, Thomas or Mr. Ancho, uh, representative for this case, yep. uh, do you have any further comments to make in the, in your case? Uh, uh, no, sir, I did submit William Thomas, 5.47th Street, for the record, Rochester, Michigan. I did submit a second set of, of site plans and details to you. I don't know if the board received that, but it does now show the location of the septic field approximately, because we don't have the exact drawings from when it was installed back in the 80s. The approximate location of the septic field, as well as a section showing the approximate height increase in the foundation. And the board talked about it trying to remediate the water issue. So I don't know if the board received that updated drawing or not. Submit it back. But that was requested by the board that we had that information. And I've got this plate here. This is 
is what was resubmitted, basically showing the location of the septic field, or at least the septic field where it currently is, 10 feet off the current corner of the structure as proposed. I think Mr. Hayward, you were one question in the, the section, as far as the height of the structure above the current Just slab. a cross section. Yeah, yeah so that's <laughs> kind of defined here. It's kind of smaller, kind of approach support. You're up. Okay. 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 Is, is this been this been presented to the uh, township as part of it the was list? submitted the dog yeah back in the last week of june okay i don't know if it got in my package or not i didn't notice it if it did so but that section demonstrates is we're adding two portions of the block on top of the current foundation and the slab and creating some kind of a concrete swell between the front of the garage and the road itself mm -hmm. that get that water to move across the front of the garage instead of into the garage as it currently does today okay All right. Does that to some degree answer your question? Yeah, yeah, perfectly. Okay. <clears throat> so it brings up about 20 inches or, or so above where it's at today, but the proposed new corner of the garage actually would be at or potentially even below where the road height is. So that does come up at a pretty good angle as you work away the road that I'm at. Yep, you have some pretty good evidence. Uh, Excuse me. You have some pretty good evidence that that is the location of the septic field. We do. Uh, I had we had see where the lines were when um, it was dried out in the, in the spring before all the grass really grew in heavily. So we're able to see pretty closely, short sure, digging the field up. But that's within a couple feel at the most. Not too much. It's the actual line where the, the pipe so is. It's sometimes hard to determine. On the it, it is. It, it very much is. Yeah. You didn't hire a wa uh, witch water? Didn't try that thing again. I actually did that over the weekend and. I've seen it work. It I, I do believe it. They worked out great. Yeah, no, I, it's it's kind of spooky watching it go. <coughs> I've, never seen I've, it. I've done it before. You yeah. I don't understand it, but it works. I don't understand it either, but it does work. Yep. So. Not in all cases, but I've seen it work. Cool. But the important one, one that we can see pretty clearly, was the one closest to that garage location. That one out of all of them, I think, is the most incorrect in this location. Okay. As it worked its way out, the other lines are approximate. The owner and I were actually speaking about it. Uh, all the rainstorm we've had this past week. He was actually out there during one of them watching the water literally surround the entire garage and work his way down into the, uh, into the lake. Wish you would have had a photographer of it or a picture of it. Could have submitted to you guys. I, uh, I guess I have a, just one more other question or sure. something else to add to that, Mr. Thomas. Is there, <clears throat> is there a vegetation buffer between the lake and? For sure, yeah. I think it's about. It's on that dimension with all grass between there. Okay. So that water does have room to dissipate as it exits beyond the garage before it gets into the water. I don't know. I haven't watched. I don't know how, how heavy it is, but um, um, if, if there's measures to riffraff. Yeah, uh, it's, it's not as much there as it is. Actually, I have to exit John's property. is continuing towards um, Herb Janowski's property. That's where it literally comes down the road and actually just goes right into it. Right where the, the maintenance of Mammoth again is and that he's going to start for his home. That's actually where one of the problem is the mud and you know, the dirt debris going in the water. Right. It's not necessarily right at the garage point itself. Yeah. But yeah, for sure, if, it, if we can mitigate that at all, the best way to mitigate that is actually a natural vegetation versus even river graph and other things like that. Bring some kind of soft grass or, or something like that water to skate through. So you're con you're conscious of that. It Very much so. Even like so, so that we're actually altering his driveway design, going to the primary residence to eliminate as much water coming out of his driveway down into the street as possible to okay. stop any erosion that we can. Thank you. Uh, instead of having a two and a half car wide approach to me, and then we're going to limit it down to barely a one car. So most of that water that comes out of the driveway is actually going to go back into his grass versus coming down the driveway into the street and exiting down by the lower garage. Okay. So we're, we're doing what we can. Right, thank There's you. still a lot of water that comes down the <coughs> that whole hillside and dumps right in front of that garage, that lower garage. Okay. <clears throat> Board, any other questions? Okay, hearing none, I would entertain a motion. In this case. I'll make a motion that we grant the variance to case 17-03. Applicant uh, John Inco is the Insco. owner. Pardon? Insco. Insco, excuse me. Mm -hmm. As bad as my last name. 
That's, yeah, so I make a motion to grant the uh, variance. Do you have uh, comments on grounds for for the? Uh, yeah, I think uh, of the variance. <clears throat> I think the variance is uh, is is uh, is approved due to the uh, enhancement of the area by this building and also the improvement of the the water flow that was just talked about. These are all th elements that uh, I thought was uh, positive in granting this. Uh, Variance. Does this motion have a second? <clears throat> I'll second no, that. No, 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 no. I'm asking, does there's it? No, there wasn't. Not yet. If there is it, I would like to second it. I okay. think we're ready to close if there's any more. For further, a particular reason. If there's right. any more further um, comments to his motion before we second that motion or, or no. support it. I'm going to second it for a reason, if I can, please. Mm -hmm. If I second it, I can add to the motion. Anybody else cannot. You do a friendly amendment to his motion, and then he has to accept. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But only the person that seconds it can do that. Okay. So with your permission, I will second it. Is that all right, sir? <clears throat> yes, sir. I would like to add to his motion that this is one of those lake lot cases or in my opinion, Addison Township does not have clearly what goes on with a lake lot. The ordinance is completely backwards. You put your boat in your backyard and your car in your front yard, then that ain't the way it is on a lake lot. So the ordinance is completely backwards and that's grounds enough for allowing the variance also. All right, I, I accept that uh, addition to uh, to that. Yep. Yeah. Good. The recording secretary have that. <clears throat> All right. Any further discussion on the motion? If I may now. Mr. Yeah. Hayward, yes. I would like to entertain or, or, or um, if you have something you want to add to the motion, you have to state it, and then both the person who did the second and then the person who did the first would have to be agreeable. Right, right. And, and I guess I, I should have put this out here in the conversation before mm -hmm. the. That's all right. Um, but I, just to cap any future expansion on that structure is that something that we want to also include in the variance in other words can, can he come back and or anybody else come back in 20 years and say oh, i want to add on to that well sure they can come back but they're going to have a good and okay yeah, yeah so the, variance, you're very, you're, the, the reason variances are important remember is because they run with the land not with the applicants correct so the grant of this variance would run with the property, not necessarily with the person standing here. So any person in the future right. who bought this property would be subject to the variance, which would be recorded, and they would have to come back and seek another variance if they wanted to expand. And at that point, it would be hard probably to meet the criteria because of the variance already granted. The variance would... Uh would allow him to build the structure as requested, as planned. Uh, it would become a uh, non-conforming property of record right. because it is under a variance. So in order to increase the non-conformity in the future, they would have to come back for another right. variance in order to expand that. And you would have this record then? Right. Fair enough, then I'm all good on my end. Good enough. Further comments? Mr. Peter? No. No. <clears throat> All right. Um, in this case, uh, Mr. Sent is, is a voting member, on, uh, and Mr. DeWitt is the alternate for now. I'd like a uh, <coughs> roll call vote. Uh, a, uh, a vote of yes would be to grant the variance, a vote of no would be to. <coughs> Not grant the variance. Um, yes. Tony Spina. Yes. Trevor Hayward. Yes. 
Vice Chair Smith? Yes. Chair Hatfield? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Have a great evening, guys. Order always Shuffling here. I'll keep this stuff in order now. I'll never get in order later. Oh. <laughs> Do you guys need this for the record at all? I know those copies were submitted. Oh, we got Very good. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. <clears throat> The next case on the agenda is <coughs> case 1702. The applicant is Verizon owner or Addison Township. <coughs> uh, the address of the property is 5020 High Road. Uh, of course, it's 0505300011. Zoning is public institutional, P1. The applicant seeks a variance from the Township of Addison Code of Ordinances, Appendix A, Addison Township Zoning Ordinance. Uh, yeah. The applicant requests a variance for the placement of a wireless communication facility, a dimensional variance for the lot area of 14.7 acres, 76 acres, from the Zoning Ordinance provisions. Wireless communication facilities, Article 4. 0.47 section 4b2 the minimum lot size shall be 20 acres I would like to reiterate <coughs> that uh, uh, the public hearing has been held uh, all public comment has been taken uh, the board may wish to ask the applicant more questions or anybody else that we could think we might be able to get pertinent data from and uh, would the <coughs> African like to address the board? We're here to answer any questions you may have. My name is John Crane, and I did receive one comment from one member of the public that I did send her some drawings and so on and so forth. Never heard another word from anyone. But we are here. Uh, with me is Michael Avery of Radio Frequency HQ. If there's any input, requests from him. Thank you very much. Okay. I, I do have one question for your engineer. I know the uh, some of the concerns that have been expressed about the tower were uh, a fall zone, and it's been explained that the monopole does not require a fall zone of the just length of the tower, as opposed to some other designs. Hi, my name is Michael Avery, 1442 Northwestern Highway, Southfield, Michigan. Regarding the fall zone with a monopole tower, they are designed to sort of collapse on themselves. So like one section would hinge and actually fall kind of like on itself like this, as opposed to the whole structure simply falling over. Is there any, is there any likelihood or what is the likelihood of the base failure? I've never seen or heard of a Verizon monopole failure. Okay. Certainly not in the state I've ever had. <laughs> Yeah, we've all seen the Barrazano Narrows Bridge and things like that. You know. um, There's a case on that holds the tower secure into the ground, and that's about 40 feet, 40 feet. But the, uh, the likelihood of such happening is. <laughs> it's close to zero. Yeah. Don't break. Board members, any other questions for the applicant? Um, I have one, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I think we explored the last meeting with other possibilities, and we talked about possibly multi. Or, or what is there? Is there any other possibilities? Any other location possibilities for that area? I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Talking about everything we did. I did the site acquisition work on this site, and we pulled them up and down the road there, Osborne, looking for a site. We were unable to find anything available from the public on that property. We then went to, came to the township and talked to them about going on this site, and it was, it's 
accepted by them, subject, of course, to all the board reviews and so on. The, we were unable to identify anything that would meet our coverage needs and fulfill this use. And to meet the environmental concerns of being out of the wet time and so on. And that's just because all of those things not have to do. But to say there's no other parcel, I mean, somebody, you know, I guess you got a billion dollars, you know, we're going to put it up money. But we were unable to find any willing sellers, willing buyers. Thank you. Thank you. That was my question, too. <laughs> sorry. Okay. sorry. I live right across the street and they never came to me. They never came to them. They never came to other people about that. But anyway, you're with the one thing I would like to ask the board. No, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid we have to reiterate. Public hearing is closed. We will not be accepting any more comments from the public. Thank you, sir. Okay. I just wanted to ask the state. Sir, that, so please. That's all I was asking. We, we have had all the comment. Um, we are doing our due diligence to try and, and uh, make an appropriate decision tonight. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Um, hearing none, motion would be ordered in order at this time. Well, if, uh, if you'll allow a short preamble so I can express my thoughts on what the motion is going to be, uh, I'd be prepared to make a motion. Uh, first, I want to start off by saying many people have asked why the township doesn't enforce the ordinances as they're written. The township has enforced the ordinances as they were written because they have denied or rejected the application because it didn't meet the ordinance. So the township did what they planning commission. Uh, did what they did. Uh, this board is existing to allow applicants to come and explain why uh, they can't meet the ordinances. And most of what we've been talking about the last couple of months has been based on why uh, this variance, acreage variance, is necessary. Um, the comments that I've heard from people in the public hearing and other stuff that has been sent to the township, um, in my mind, breaks down into three basic categories. One is fear of uh, radiation, uh, electromagnetic radiation. Number two is fear of or danger from uh, the tower falling down. And the third is that the tower is ugly or, to say it a different way, that it doesn't fit into the rural character of Addison Township. Uh, as far as the EMF radiation is concerned, uh, there is a federal law. Uh, it's the uh, Section 704 of the Federal Telecommunic Telecommunications Act of 1996 uh, specifically preempts consideration. Let me read it so I get it right here. Uh, specifically preempts consideration of the health and environmental effects of radio frequency radiation at levels below federal current Federal Communication Commission standards in decisions involving placement, construction, and modification of wireless facilities. Uh, in plain English, that means we cannot use fear of EMF radiation as a reason to approve or disapprove a variance. That's federal law. Um, you know, the danger from a falling down tower, I think, has been described pretty well. Um, the township says that the ordinance is written the way it is, uh, requiring 20 acres, so that towers held up by guy wires will have a fall zone equal to the height of the tower. Um, the tower, um, in the research that I've been able to do, in Michigan there has never been a cell phone tower fail. I don't know where that picture comes from. I, I, I don't believe it's Michigan. It doesn't matter where it's at, it's, it's possible. Oh, building codes matter quite a great deal. Sure. Anyway. Um, uh, there has never been a cell phone tower failure in Michigan for Verizon or any other service provider that I've been able to determine. Um, uh, 
Number three, um, the tower's ugly or not in keeping with our rural character. Uh, this board really isn't qualified to judge ugly, uh, or none of us probably be on the board. Um, um, the, the meaning of rural character is not really very precise. Um, we would like to think of it as the last 20 years or 50 years, but certainly if you go back to uh, 100 years, go back to the, to the year 1900, uh, there was no refrigeration or supermarkets. That was the rural character at that time. I don't think that would be acceptable to people today. Um, you know, CAT scans and kidney dialysis were unknown. We don't want to go back to that. Um, there was no telecommunications of any kind in 1900. Um, I, I, that was the rural character of this township at that time. Um, I think we need to progress. Having said all that, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the variance, acreage variish variance um, for petition number 1702. I'd like to second that, and I'd like to have the privilege of uh, adding to the motion. I've made a few notes <coughs> similar to you have, uh, that you have done, and I have some that you haven't, and I would like to know if I could add them to your motion. Please, sir. Uh, one of the things is that was mentioned in the public hearing was the accessible to ladders or to have it be a nuisance. Uh, I think it should be stated in the motion that the cell towers constructed will not have an accessible ladder to make it an attractive nuisance. Okay. okay. Give me a minute, let me go down my list. Would you like to make that more specific, like you know, minimum of 20 feet off the ground or something? I mean, it's kind of vague. I believe somewhere in the discussion that uh, was 25 feet. The first accessible ladder, 25 feet. It's 20 to 25. I'll, I'll make it 25. Okay, 25 feet. Make it 25. Ladder won't. We'll start at least 25 feet above the ground. Okay. okay. Um, one of the things that we should note in, in our motion is that the variance requested are the minimum required to meet the objectives of the project. That should be included in my opinion, if that's all right with you. I'm good with it. I'm not sure what it means. It's just well, it means that we are not asking for the grocery store. We're just asking for a loaf of bread because that's all we need. And my only apprehension is that the, uh, the the area being leased by Verizon is a 100 by 100 foot square, 100. Which is the minimum needed. We we don't need two. We didn't ask for 200 the, by 200. We're just true. asking for 100 by 100. But but the actual construction is going to be something like 40 by 60. Well, so should 40 by 60 be the minimum or 100 by 100? I don't, I, I wonder if we want to get state, into that. You don't have to state the minimum. You just have to say you're issuing, in your opinion, the minimum necessary. Okay. okay. I, can, I can live with that. There was something mentioned that I think could have in there that we allow the, the, the site to have an approved driveway. That was one of the things that was asked for. And that's a minimum that we're asking for also. Okay, the, the plan as it was submitted, I understand, has driveway right. from uh, Oakwood Road. That's correct. And then that should be in the motion that we agree with that. You mentioned technical advancements. I had that wrote down. <clears throat> Could we, uh, would, it, would it be appropriate to constrain the applicant to the uh, application drawings as presented to the board? 
um, and that would kind of lock up anything that uh, could be a surprise to us in the future. Well, as I understand it, the township has to go approve a site plan. <clears throat> Correct. I would expect the, that the, approval to cover any of the things our, we're thinking about. Our decision could be based off of the plan that has been presented as far as the location of the tower and the construction, like the driveway type of thing. That, that, if that, would, the, if that, the, that would be true, but from here, this is not the end of this issue. The applicant correct. still has to apply for site plan and go through engineering. Right. And that would be handled in a normal course. Um, so those issues would be raised. Some specific issues are the uh, distance, uh, at the 200 foot distances from the tower to the road and from the tower to over by the school. If you grant Those this variance, it has right. to be in the box they've described. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. In, this, is, in this box? Yes. <clears throat> they can't put it anywhere on the land. It has to be in accordance with that. Okay, that, that's what I'm trying to get at. If, if that, uh, I'm just asking if that would be appropriate for. <clears throat> that would be the extent of my addition I can right now. Make a motion. So. Thank you, Tony. Okay. Yeah, I accept those. Thank uh, you very much. Uh, okay. Amendments. Okay. Okay. Um, so you had a motion. Procedurally, you have a motion by Tony and a second by Lawrence with friendly amendments. If anybody else wants to amend the motion, it would have to be approved by both Lawrence and Tony. Correct. So okay. if any of our fellow board members want to add, we listen to what they say, we have to approve it, either goes or doesn't. I'll go through you first and Tony second. Thank you. Any other requests for? Uh... None here. Okay. okay. All right. I'll open up to the board for discussion on a motion. If you raise any, please uh, make your comments or questions. Or... Hearing none, it would be appropriate at this time to have a roll call vote. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, an answer of yes on the vote would be to approve the zoning the variance as requested. Um, a vote of no would be to deny it. Okay, roll call vote, please. Robert DeWitt? Yes. Tony Spina? Yes. Robert Hayward? No. Vice Chair Smith? Yes. Chair Hatfield? Yes. Okay. Tony Variance question? has been approved. Can I ask a procedural question? No, ma'am. Not right this time. It's not open for public comment. Okay. I'll answer you when I'm going to go. I'm going to leave. You can ask me out there. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And before the agenda is uh, a public hearing, a republic hearing on the case of uh, 1704. Now, Donald Powell. Yeah. Uh, the property address is 640 Brewer. Parcel ID 0535200071. Zoning is R2 or residential 2. Uh, yeah. Let me finish reading this just for the record, oh, I'm sorry. please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I'm good for you to be. Uh, applicant seeks a variance from the Addison Township Code of Ordinances, Appendix A, Addison Township Zoning Ordinance. Applicant request, request a 5.5 foot variance in height and a 494 square foot variance in, for the size of an accessory building from Article 4, Section 4.21. Number three A and D, uh, and the ordinance reads: that an accessory building shall not exceed one story or 14 foot in height. The total area of all residential accessory buildings shall not exceed a total of 1,500 feet. And this is applies to R2 zoning. Um, we're going to uh, have a public hearing on this this evening. Um, but the, the reason there's going to be a public hearing is that the, uh, the request uh, was an error for last month. We had a public hearing on a request for a two-foot variance 
and because of a misinterpretation of the plans, uh, it is actually a 5.5 that we're requesting. So we, we're going to open up a public hearing as soon as we hear from uh, um, you know, our applicant here. Um, okay, is is the uh, the data that I presented correct? Is it 5.5? Is what the variance is? Yes. You agree with that? Okay. He goes to the middle of the truss. Yeah, and the number is 494 square yes. feet for yes. variance on the on the area. Okay. Would you like to present something for us, Mr. Hall? Yes. <laughs> I have some pictures, and this is why I asked for the variance. This is a uh, this is a 12 foot door and this is my fifth wheel that I put in the garage and this is why I'm requesting to have a 16 foot eave because I need a 14 foot door to get the get the fifth wheel into. Right, so you're, so you're requesting a, okay, you're, well, the, 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 yeah, the zoning says 14 foot overall height. Right. You were looking for a 14 foot wall height. Four, or 16, 16 foot, 16 wall, foot height. wall height mm -hmm. so that I could put the <clears throat> uh, 14 foot door in so that I could get the fifth wheel in. These right. are 12 foot doors. I'd probably mm -hmm. show you. Okay. Um, we pass that around. Okay. Plus the total height of the building. The total height of the building would be 19.5. Uh, oh, 24 feet. feet. Yes. That's what you were Yes. Yes. Yes, and that's why I located it where I located it. I lo located it down in a hole. Hmm. It's nine feet below the, found, the top of the foundation of the basement wall of my house. Hmm. The only place that you can see the barn at all off the property is straight down my driveway because the house the house takes in the rest of the barn. Or the neighbors. Yes, and the barn is, the barn <laughs> is lower. Yeah. It's going to be seven feet lower than what the, than what the top of the house is. So it would actually be hidden in that spot, even at a 16 foot wall. Mm -hmm. And then these are adjoining, these are adjoining houses and barns and stuff that are there in the square footages and stuff that were given variances, given variances to build these. Uh, this one here is- Actually, uh, I don't believe that's true. I don't either. I've been on this, both of us have been on this board for over 20 years, and we have not had a variance on Drainer Room, or on, uh, excuse me, Brewer. Oh, oh. We, had a very, we had one variance on Brewer Road, was to put the garage in the front yard. Yeah, right. And there was another one, there was another one, this one here at 620 Brewer Road, you gave the variance to put a barn down below, and she had, and they, and they actually, she How many actually. years ago? Um, I, I can't tell you that. I More than know. 20? Um, could be, could be. I'm not. Sh I'm not positive. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't recall that. One. Yeah, and, and this one here, this one here is actually underneath high tension wires. <laughs> so you know the the DTE guy that come out to my property, he says he's boy. He said the uh, the township really messed up on this one because he said the wires have been there since 1949. Okay, that would be on the south side of Brewer Road. That would be just west of the property, right? East. Yep. That would be west of my property. The house next west of my property. East of the property has yes. a big one. Yes. Why not agree? Or the, uh, okay. All right. West, west of the property is the. Is your property adjacent to the power line? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. You, want to you make know that pretty good, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, it is. It, I, I am adjacent to the power line. Yeah. And um, uh, Welch's. Our next door, and that's the that's the one they right. got the variance there. The one just here, right? Exactly. And uh, she told me that she they had to come to the variance board twice to get the to get the variance on build that barn. But DTE told me he says I have no idea how the building inspector ever want to build underneath high tension wires. Well, my question is, did they get a permit? Well, she said they came with a yeah. Board. She okay. said they she said they had to come twice for variance to get but, variance. Uh, but anyways, um, whatever, yeah. beside all that, I, I just wanted to show you some pictures and stuff. I want to show you the picture of why I need the 16 foot eave to house the a couple things that I have. I got no commercial equipment anymore. It's all residential equipment, so I don't want the barn for commercial. Just strictly residential. Um, just to put the stuff in it that I already own. But like I told you before the meeting, if I knew it was R2 when I bought the property, which I didn't do my homework, I guess, I probably would have never bought it because I always intended on building a barn to house my, house my 
got a pretty good sized pocket of R2. Yeah, yeah, and I, yeah, I didn't know that. And uh, <clears throat> but the barn will actually um, where I located it, I located it so that it would would be hidden from the public to where the only place you can see it is down the driveway. And you couldn't do anything about that. Okay. Was your neighbor Welch? Ann Welch. Is her husband still alive? Her husband died. Her husband died. She's all alone. <clears throat> yep. <clears throat> and actually, the uh, um, that was all woods in there. If you recall, I took all the head out of there, and they. Uh, and when, we, when I had it surveyed, when I brought the two pieces of property together, I brought the two pieces of property together so that I could do that. And um, when it was surveyed, her whole fence is five feet on my property. And I told her, I said, I don't care about that. I said, as long as you're alive. I said, you know, but I said, you got to know that it's got to be taken down or it's going to be my fence <laughs> if somebody else buys it, you know, if she decides to sell it. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Uh, you just made the statement that the other two cases uh, received variance. Do you have documentation to uh, to prove that? No, I don't. Does this hearsay or more or less? I, well, they told me. The owners they, told me. They told Yeah, you. the owners themselves told me okay. that they had to come after variances to get them. Okay. Yeah, and they had no problem, and I, I haven't had anybody come to me and say that they have any problem with anything, so. Yeah. It's, it's, it's good information to have, uh, although our, our board does not operate on precedent. We, don't, we neither set a precedent nor do we use precedent. Uh, the, uh, there are some procedures in the township where precedent does apply, and that's uh, at the discretion of the zoning official in some specific cases. Um, but uh, it is good to know. But we, we don't sit on precedent. Okay. Oh, so Mrs. Yeah. Walsh said that they built the building? Yes. Yes. Um, I have one question here. The, the, the two parcels that you bought are together. Yes. These are, uh, did you join those? Can I come up here? I can't hear. Surely. Okay. Did, did you join those two parcels? Yes. As one? So the new parcel ID is 071? Uh, should we'll number? 07143. 43 is the last part of it. Okay. The said well number is only. <laughs> oh, we've got listed right there. That That is the said well number for, for your property. Um, 071. That is the 71. And then this other parcel is part of it. Correct? Or no? This, this, this is, is all one parcel. This is all one parcel. All the blue. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, and and it used to come right straight across here like this here in these two right. So it has been joined, so it cannot yes. be divided again. Can't be, can't be divided very again. easily. <laughs> I had everything put together. <coughs> together. Mm -hmm. Cannot be redivided for ten years for one yeah. thing because you've just put it together. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, location, proposed location for your garage is that partially on the what yes. used to be the it's other. Partially on one and partially on the other. So, so that further restricts uh, division of property. Breaking up the property. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Just for my own clarification. Okay. Okay. You could. One more small clarification. We have a copy of from Kennedy Surveying of the steep descriptions for combining the two properties. Was this ever recorded at the county? Yes, it was. I don't have that. Yeah, mm. yeah, but it was all reported. Everything was taken care of, and you and you should have a copy. Pauline got it. Okay, because what I have here is a copy of Kennedy survey. The warranty deed. This is dated March of this year. And it it does not show. It shows two different Sidwell numbers, which is what made me ask the question. Is it state of Michigan? State of Michigan real estate transfer. Oh, transfer tax. Tax item shows this, and then somebody hand wrote in here the other property number, so 43 and 44, not the combined number 71 or whatever it would have been. 
No, it's it's. Uh, I believe that I believe the new one ends with 43. Mm. It was it was 43 and 44 was the two pieces of property. Right. And I believe that that's what they. That's what we have on the Kennedy survey. Right. Yeah. And and he bought these two together. Bought these two together. And I, I believe that they marked it at 43. Right. But having get, been given a new schedule number of 071, is, um, it means it's been accepted by their the local and, and uh, county government has a as a new sidwell has won a lot. That should also cost me that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the only other thing I'd like to add is that um, the building height, the five and a half feet variance is not the total height of the building. Right. I don't believe it can be. Size of 16 feet, I've yeah, got to have more pitch than that. Right. Mm -hmm. right. right. The, it is. Yeah, the, the five yeah. and a half feet. The, 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 total, flat roof. It's the total height of the front, the total height of the barn is 16 feet to the E, and then it's got 101, 101 inches to the peak. Okay, well, okay, which would be, be eight, uh, be 24 feet, uh, some some odd inches. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My point is that yeah. this yeah. the building isn't 21 and right. right. feet tall. The peak is quite a bit higher than that. Yes. The peak right. is, 20, the <clears throat> peak is 24, mm -hmm. 20 foot four, 24 20. foot four. Right. 24 foot four. The eave is 16 feet. Right. The mean, which Means. is the distance added feet. from the ground right. to the midpoint of the ridge and the eave. The, the middle the middle of the gable basically yeah, right. mm -hmm. that middle of the gable to the ground is what is referenced for an ordinance of 14 feet and so he's, if we and go he's, from here to here we measure here is that the idea exactly yeah halfway right. the, the average of the height every height so this building is taller than for a standard gable feet. rope that's right. that's the formula okay. uh, there are different formulas for a frames and whatever mm -hmm. so <clears throat> Okay. More questions for the applicant. Okay. In that case, uh, yeah, um, I'd like to open this up for a public hearing. We did, we did advertise that we would have another public hearing this evening because the application has changed. Uh, so we'll open a public hearing at 6:55. And ask that anybody that would like to speak to this case uh, state your name and, and uh, location and uh, give us your comments. And I'm getting blank stares from my audience. <laughs> Sir. Well, I'm his neighbor on the other side. And I only had a question for him in a way. Is that um, from your, your name, sir? You, pardon, your name, sir? Uh, John Thompson. I live at about 750 Brewer on the other side of the transmission lines. Okay. And which way is your building oriented, sir? The, the gable end. The gable, street. gable end would be oh, please, based yeah. to the east. Just, just as a matter east of procedure, I, I need you to address the board okay. rather than then oh, we, could, we could ask the uh, applicant to um, make comments uh, later. So you want to know the, the orientation of the gables? Yes, and, uh, and the doors. The, the door is going to be in the, the gable end of the building, or I believe, if I may, I believe what he's proposing is the gables to be on the east and west side, uh -huh. with the overhead doors to the uh, north. We, we do have a drawing on, on the, the east. east. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, that's the reason. Yeah. Okay. So the, the gable ends would be north and south, and the uh, no east no, and west. No, east, east and west. west. In the, in the oh, doors of each okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. So you're, you're going to have your doors under the eave. Yeah. Rather than I gave one. Okay. No. No. Doors are doors are going to be facing the north. Yes. Okay. okay. And the gables are east and west. Right. Yeah. Okay. 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 So you're going to be under you know doors under an eave rather yes, than under exactly. a gable end. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And I just wondered right. what you, myself, and and maybe would have. Right. So. Uh, yeah, we can answer that with the evidence provided by the applicant. Okay. Any other comments, sir? No, sir. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, I'm going to close the public forum at uh, 
7 o'clock. <clears throat> and, uh, all right. So we have addressed the, uh, the only questions here as far as orientation of the building. Um, board, any other questions for the applicant? Hearing none, uh, would entertain a motion. What would you like the motion to say? We'll take this up at the next meeting. I think we can make a decision this evening. We're busting precedents. Um, we have already had uh, discussion, and we we knew about the change in the uh, request at our last meeting. Um, I think it might be appropriate to. Uh, to consider this our, our regular two meetings. The only reason we had to uh, uh, have another public forum this evening, or not public forum, but a, uh, a hearing, is to make sure that all neighbors were notified that the, there was a change in the request. But I think the board has had ample time to digest yeah. what the actual request was. I agree, Mr. Chairman. I think it was the townships or <clears throat> Administrator that just failed to get the announcement out originally. Mr. Powell's been here two meetings now. Um, the precedent really is, I don't think, a, uh, a topic or a, an issue, in my opinion. Any comments, Mr. Smith? Well, I don't like to break precedent, so I don't like it, no. Yeah, okay. that's my opinion. Any other comments on procedure? Um, <clears throat> we we kind of discussed last uh, month that we might be breaking procedure, and so yeah, I, I think it's okay to go ahead in this particular instance. Yeah. Anybody care to make a motion on the uh, application? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion here. Um, in hearing all the uh, means and means of Mr. Powell trying to accommodate, um, squeeze everything down in height. I'd like to grant the variance for case number just here. Oh, 1704 uh, for 640 Brewer Road, Anson Township. Um, there's, it looks to, uh, I, from what I gathered and can see, there's surrounding neighbors that are enjoying the same, uh, very close to the same um, building height, uh, as well as pointed out the neighbor to the west um, also has uh, approximately 2,300 square foot um, accessory structures. Um, Uh, not to mention uh, as well that the site itself is nine feet lower than the house grade that will be um, um, a as built. So there, uh, therefore, I'd like to grant the variance. We have a motion on the floor. Do we? A second. But not seconded. Not seconded. If we're for near a procedure, she uh, think the motion dies. Um, we need to have a motion and a second to be able to make a decision this evening. If you would uh, revoke your motion. I'd make a motion that we table this until next month. Well, I'm hearing no other comments. And I'll explain why. It's, 
I'm, I'm with Lawrence on this one. It's been my practice to not go look at a property to, until after the public hearing. So I did not think we were going to make a take a vote tonight. Okay. I I haven't well, been out to see the property. If there's a vote, I'm going to abstain because I, I don't I can't vote yes or no. I, I just uh, because I didn't think we were voting on this today. I was under the assumption that you did make a vote the second time out. Yeah, it was. And yeah, it was your last month. Mm -hmm. This month, I, I was under the assumption that that you is were. that is typically correct. But the the the, the, the application last month was no. not correct. No. So really, we well, literally had to start over legally from last month, even though it wasn't my fault. I mean, it, it, well, I got to be held accountable for the township. Well, it wasn't I'm a township fault. It was a difference in the variance requesting. It went from two but feet the to five feet. The variance was set up, and, the, and everything was set up right. with the with the building inspector, and the building inspector changed. Okay. He changed it. I didn't change it. Yeah. And I, I don't mean to I don't mean to be this way. It's just the fact that I just sold my house, and now I'm in a situation where I haven't got anything to put my house stuff into, and the house has been delayed because of the state. So I'm basically gonna be homeless here shortly if I don't get a barn built, and I've already waited two months for the variance. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to the public no. hearing is over. say it, but. This is just comments? The public hearing is over, yes. Okay, comments only. I, I'm, I'm with Tony and I'm with myself. Um, I fought for this precedent for 20 years. And I think the chair will vouch for me that there have been things that have come up between the time of the public hearing and the time of the vote. And I think what I fought for has been received and proven to be a good idea. I concur. Um, Absolutely, 100%. And I, and I, and I sympathize with the applicant and, and everybody else sitting here, but. I'm going to stick to my guns, if, and I'm going to say the same thing Tony did. If there had to be a vote tonight, I would abstain. Okay. So, just Mr. Powell, it, it, um, I may have misspoke too. It's not a typo error. It was just a discovery during the meeting that it sounds like um, the building inspector didn't add the math, or someone didn't do the math right. Um, and the differences for the variances you're requesting. Therefore, the <coughs> notices that were put out really wasn't um, telling the full, the whole, uh, not true, but the accurate, what they, was not accurate. So for us to, in other words, if you were looking for 500 feet higher and we decide and give you the variance now, now I understand it wasn't a typo, but it was a, right. it was more in the error of the calculation. It was interpretation of the ordinance. It was, yes, it was more of a um, calculation error um, those people will not have the chance um, to speak to speak out. So legally, in the legal sense, we're doing the right thing um, by, by Mr. Smith, and, and I, I agree too. I fight for this uh, second meeting. Let's explore. Let's do our homework. Let's absorb whatever else we can take in. And um, that's so that's that's kind of where we're at, um, unfortunately. Well, that's fine. If that's what it's got to be, it's got to be. Okay. Um. <clears throat> okay. So we're gonna. So we have a we have a motion on the floor. Go back your motion, or it died for lack of a second. I'm pulling back my motion. No, you just died for lack of a second. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Black I'll make a motion that we table this till next May. I second it. Moved and seconded to the table. Um, um, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Yeah, the motion carries. Uh, I, I regret the inconvenience to you, Mr. Paul. That's fine. Um, can I ask one question, though? Sure. Sir, yes. Can I, can I bring you the Sid Wells and stuff like that next time so that I can prove that the two pieces are yeah, uh, and everything? Actually, it would be would that help you out? If, if you could submit those to, I will to the township. Absolutely. Uh, to the absolutely. township uh, I'll bring authority, and then uh, they'll be added to the file. Okay. And when we rehear it next month. Okay. Okay, so that meeting will be August 10th. Okay. The next regular meeting. Um, again, I, I thank you for your patience. And, oh, no problem. And, uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Have a good night. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay.
Okay, other business. Correspondence received. Uh, I'm aware of none except for uh, uh, the items that we've already discussed uh, that pertaining to the cases we've had. Mr. Um, Chairman, I'm sorry, real quick, relating to the last. Yes, uh, subject. Mr. Sorry. DeWitt, available. Um, on the ten. Accepted to do the um, vote on this next meeting for on the Powell case. I believe it'd be appropriate. Sure. Uh, if you cannot make it, <clears throat> yeah, being yeah. having been at all meetings and yeah. heard all the time. Okay. Yep. Very good. So, yes. So you're saying you won't be here next meeting? Is that the idea, Trevor? No. Oh, I'm not saying that. Oh. <laughs> oh okay. But if it happens, then. Oh, okay. I, well, but, uh, I, 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 I I'll, I'll be here. I don't catch what's going on. Okay. I'll be the one speaking first. I'll catch up later. I'll catch up later. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Uh, if, if if we are short a member, Mr. DeWitt would be taking the uh, He's full member board. to, to yeah. do that. Yes, yeah. yeah. voting yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, if if we should be short any members, uh, otherwise it would be the regular members here. Okay. Um, zoning board uh, reports. Um, I have nothing. Uh, anybody else have anything that needs to be reported on as far as the ZBA? Okay, report of Planning Commission liaison. We're having some public hearings next month and it regards the uh, septic issue around the lake. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so it will be the report published yeah. after what happens. Yeah. Okay. Is that the uh, existing fields or just the new the fields? new applications? Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. um, well, I can. I guess I can brief you a little bit. Um, Please. If if the uh, well before the public notice, but it's going to be public again. So what's the difference? Um, if a person on the lake or the lake lot, etc., needs to replace the septic field, and it can't be done traditionally. And don't quote me on everything, but what it amounts to is if you will put in one of these new systems, the Vantex or something else, that you probably will be allowed to do that with a 50 foot variance. Or with 50 foot setback rather than 50 foot setback. Yeah, set yeah. That's, I think, what's good to adjust of it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. And that, uh, that will save, uh, I think. Uh, oh, I think that's good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Lake owners, especially. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. I would like it. will cost us a few bucks, a few yeah. less meetings, but that's besides the right. point. Okay. <laughs> All right. I guess we're not in a position to comment on the, on the right. Planning Commission or the uh, Township Board stations right. on that. Yeah. That's good. Uh, we've had enough cases that uh, clarification would be good. Okay. Um, I'd like to open it up to a public forum at 7 12. Yes, ma'am. Please, please step up and say your name, and, and uh, we'd be glad to take your comments or questions. I'm Ann Susannis from Brighton. Yes, ma'am. Um, and I have two questions for you. And I don't know that you can answer them, but I know it's been brought up several times that a variance for cell phone tower was requested near Leonard Elementary and was denied. Now, you folks have been involved with the CBA for a long time, so can you explain why it was denied? I don't recall the case offhand right <laughs> I'm, now. I'm going to tell you the same thing. I don't remember it. don't remember that case. I, I, I'll um, tell you what little I remember, and that is that there was uh, a need for a cell tower somewhere in the northern part of the township. Uh, a particular property owner who had commercial property on the east side of uh, the village of Leonard uh, pretty desperately wanted that tower on his property so he could get the money from it. Uh, it ended up not being put there for a number of reasons, and it is now at Watershed Park. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it was never. It was never. There was never an application to put it on this commercial property that was denied. It just never got. Yeah. It, it was proposed, there. but it never was, went through uh, the paperwork. The tower was proposed. Yeah. This property owner really wanted it on his property. It didn't happen. But it never happened. It never came before the zoning board. Of it was never I don't, I don't believe it did for that come location. to our board. No. He never submitted the whole. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, right. So the board never voted on it. 
No, it, it never, never came to the board. It was, never, it, was never, it was never on our agenda. To the best of my recollection, and, and Mr. Smith both, uh, it, it, never on the agenda. And we, we've been on for longer than that yeah, period of time. It wasn't the elementary school property, it was property, the, it was the commercial us. property next okay. to that. Okay. Thank you. And then for the second question I have, um, I know you mentioned that you wanted time with this last issue to go out and see the site as part of your preparation for being able to vote. Um, right. Then do you all go out and see, for instance, when it comes to this power near Kingsbury School, do you all go out and see the site there and possibly discuss at some point other possible sites in the area? Uh, that might be well, two I have questions. two things. Yeah. Two <laughs> things, and I'm trying lately here. Uh, there is no obligation for any of us to go see anything. I understand okay. that. Um, if more than two more than a majority if a majority of this board ever meets it has to consider a public meeting right and it has to be published in advance yeah, right. and there has to be minutes taken and it has to be everything so any so two no. of us can go and look at something but if there's three it's illegal so I we don't even get to two i think she's asking is has anybody sorry if i may but no, that's fine i think she's just asking has anybody else outside even our board um but uh, I've seen the site at Kingsbury School Board. Yeah, sure. I have. <laughs> sure. Oh, no, but what I was going to say is um, if they've explored any other possible right. sites, right. not so much no, that we're talking to. Not our role. Our role is to say role. yes or no to a variance or a, something in between. We act we on applications. Yeah, we don't yes. We don't propose alternates, but, no solutions. Yeah, if I may add, I know I have been out to that site, and I'm pretty sure all of my board members have also sure. been, yeah. been to we take a look at the site. site. Uh, to, to discuss it, but we we have no authority to discuss other options. No, I that's understand. not up to us. <laughs> I was just when you mentioned something about in order to be prepared for this man's proposal, this last man, you said you wanted to see the site. I just wondered if that was part yes. of what anybody did as far uh, as the cell phone tower. It's optional for everybody, and it's never done as a group. Oh, no, no, I oh, But we, but we have each option. individually gone out and seen Pardon that site. We have each individually gone out and gone seen out. the site, yes. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? I have one question for you, Mr. Smith. Sir, you no, let, me, oh, sorry, <laughs> let me finish the uh, public forum here. Okay. Please, um, um, then no, we'll go to that. Any Anybody else who, uh, would like to make a comment in the public forum? I see only one other person. No comments. Questions? All right. Public forum is closed at 717. And uh, uh, did you have another question? Uh, I did. Mr. Uh, and you brought up earlier tonight uh, in reference to how the township treats lake properties. I think you said 100% backwards. Or, mm -hmm. uh, is the Planning Commission working on doing anything about that? <laughs> But there was some activity along those lines. To, I've tried to talk to the uh, township administration and over the years, and I've tried to talk to the planner over the years, and I just don't seem to be get anybody okay. off base. And okay. so, what happens uh, ends up at the ZBA, and it gets cured or not cured, and that's the end of it. Yes. But okay. I think you all understand what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, I guess we can. Yeah. We have a township ordinance and it says, you know, your front yard is somewhere and your backyard is uh, where the street is and it's just completely and backwards. There has been some it's, discussion in the past about yeah. making a lake district. There has uh, been. Uh, exceptions. Yeah. Or, or and I wish they'd make a lake district and then we can have a lake district sewer. Mm -hmm. yeah. and everything would really be fine. Okay. Uh, yep. That'd be the right. We get a point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. The only thing left on our agenda is uh, a motion to adjourn. And I move it. Do we have any discussion? <laughs> Wait a minute. Do, can we have some discussion uh, before we close? Sure. On. I think we can, yes. Okay. Uh, it, it was in bounds. All right, let me uh, introduce the discussion. This is not against any case, okay? So we're not in violation of anything. Okay. But you brought something up tonight. You made some comments that when a case comes before us, presidents, President. Pre presidents, other cases similar to what the applicant is asking for would be <clears throat> is definitely not grounds 
correct. for approval of a variance, correct? Correct. I understand that ordinance correctly? That, that is by the uh, provisions of the, uh, uh, the variance procedures by the state law. Correct. That we do not set precedent. And then the, the, the due diligence to prove or, it, yeah, so it, it, let me further say uh, that particular example, if an applicant would bring it up, would he have to say that those examples in, in uh, they, uh, do they meet the, uh, the ordinances or not? Are they in compliance with the ordinance, these examples, or not? These are all details right. that is the burden of the applicant to prove to us, correct? That is, that is correct. But even Not if, speaking in yeah. any cases, I'm talking in generalities. But, but even if, he could, if, if an applicant could say that a, a similar variance to what he's requesting has been granted before, by granting that variance in the past, we do not legally set precedent. Uh, Every case is determined on its own merit, and precedent is not a consideration. Okay, I just want to make I understand, I understand it 100 percent. Okay. And I do believe I'm in order to say that the gentleman tonight, or anyone else that comes to us and says, well, all of my neighbors have it, and I'm entitled to it. It's not a just reason. Uh, just like uh, any decision by this board has no monetary consideration. If you have a lot and you want something done and because of topography it can't be done, or you think it can't be done, if you could put in $10,000 worth of fill that can be done, go ahead and do it. Yeah. Correct. And, and that is also um, right. by the state statute that establishes the variance procedures. Yeah. So, uh, that, uh, uh, money issues or, or yeah, financials no monetary are not, consideration. Yeah, are not considered exactly. grounds yeah. for a uh, practical difficulty, what we used to call hardship. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, both explanations are. Thank you for asking. So make sure you know that I'm clear. Maybe somebody else has a question on that too. But correct. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. We're not yet. I, no. I, I, make, oh, a, I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I support it. All right. Aye. Moving second to adjourn. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Thank you. Aye, aye, aye.